In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we heard from the in epistle reading that if we follow Christ, if we try to live according to the gospel, then we will be persecuted. This is what it says in the epistle of today. It also says that if you are a warlock or doing other things and they're totally worldly, if you're not interested in salvation, then you can prosper here on this earth. But this is not what we want. We want to really to follow our Lord. And if we have to go through persecutions, we should be ready to go through it. Now, did you or I, did we go through persecutions? If we didn't, then we still can have it ahead of time. Persecutions we have to go through because it humbles our heart. And there is another way of humbling our heart, and this is if we start uh, lambasting yourself. If you start getting uh, upset with yourself, with your behavior, with your sinfulness, and then really consider yourself as being a no good Nick. And when you look at your neighbor, no matter who it is, whether it's uh, somebody in the family, uh, they all look to you actually better than you are, for you know your own worthlessness. And this is the spirit that we want to develop, to feel that way. This way we will never judge anybody, because we'll know that as soon as we meet somebody, it doesn't matter who it is, and whether the person is committing a grave sin, but you have no idea what's going on in his heart. The grave sin that he or she committed, it may be washed off with truly with repentance, as we heard in today's parable of the, um, the Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee, as the Lord gave the parable, he came into the church all full of himself. He came up right to the altar and started to uh, praise God and thank God that he is not like everybody else, like those fornicators and those uh, shenanigans and all those people and <clears throat> that he really shows that he despised. And then he notices there is a publican came in into the church and he uh, says and that, that I'm not like uh, this publican uh, and uh, I fast twice a week and I give 10% of whatever I get to the Lord and, and so on. So he is praising himself. Well, this is the spirit that the church doesn't want us to retain or to, or to keep. And, and we're starting the Lentil Triodin uh, from today. And the next week is going to be about the prodigal son. And uh, so we're getting closer to the great land. Why does the Lord start? The church is starting the uh, you know, Lent, uh, Triodian uh, Lent from this, from the publican and the Pharisee the week. Well, to, to make us aware of what we are and uh, that we have to try to remember these words of the Apostle where he, he said that the Lord came on this earth to save sinners of whom I am the chief. And this is St. Paul. He said that. And we say that every time we come before the Holy Communion. So it cannot be just lip service. It has to be really in our heart. We have to really believe that. Now if we believe that with and we accept that, then immediately you're free from that one terrible thing that will bring us into the hell, and this is judging others. No one can judge if he feels that he's worse than anybody else. We'll keep our mouth shut, and what we do is we will pray hard for that, for somebody that falls into a sin. If we notice that they, he or she is doing a sin, well, it doesn't matter who it is. It may be your husband, it may be your wife, it may be your children, and no matter who it is, or your parents, or literally your neighbors, or somebody else that you may hear that uh, somebody did something, that, oh, you would, could never do such a thing, and this and this sort is 
But you have to say, I would, I didn't do that thing, but for the grace of God. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I probably would have fallen into that trap also. And this is the uh, spirit that we have to understand. Then we cannot judge. Then we cannot judge. And who knows the heart except the Lord himself, as it says in the scripture. Only the Lord knows the heart of a person. And at this moment, he or she may be struggling with a terrible passion, with a uh, something that taken over her, whether it's drunkenness or, or smoking or, or narcotics or whatever it may be that uh, is seem to be getting popular today, or sex, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. He or she may be struggling very hard to get rid of it, but cannot do it. Uh, there was one ingredient is missing, and this is the grace of God. For without the grace of God, none of us can conquer any kind of a passion. None of us can conquer any kind of temptation, not only passion, but even temptation, my beloved. And this is what, what we have to realize. And if we realize that in the beginning of the Lent of Triodion, then we will start and, and give our, our own will up. And we will take, have the church take us by the hand and lead us right through all these weeks up the way to the Paschans to make us, uh, to get rid of all those things which is very offensive to our Lord. We must learn to love our Lord more than we love anything at all, more than we love life itself. And this is what the saints have done. And don't tell me that, well, I'm not a saint. But you and I, we are not a saint. We're the greatest sinners. But through the God's grace, God can make us saints to be able to make it into heaven. Can you imagine having a heaven, being in heaven and you will see sinners like I or like you, I can't imagine that we must become saints to make it to the kingdom of heaven my beloved, let's work on it but know that God resists the proud, there is no way you and I can get any help from our Lord through his grace the all powerful grace to conquer anything that we have to conquer unless we humble ourselves unless we recognize that we are great sinners and that we need the Lord that without the Lord's grace we cannot really do anything good and this is the spirit that the church wants us to have are we going to become blue because of it or depressed over it that we are so no good well, we could be if we don't believe in the Lord, our, our God. But if we believe in Christ that he came to save these sinners of whom I am the chief, then you will know that because you recognize that you are the greatest sinner, that Christ has come and is willing to help you, to get you out of your dung hill, out, out, out of your dung hole, whatever, whatever you're in. No matter what is, has oppressed you, no matter what has tied you up, no matter what kind of sins, the Lord is willing to free you from it. There's one condition, stop being proud, let's stop being proud, let's not look at the others and find faults with them, let's not find any faults with anybody except for with ourselves, M meaning I have to find faults in me and see them and you, all of you, my brothers and sisters, you have to see the fault in yourself and then you can fight it. If you don't see the faults, you can't fight it. This, it doesn't make any sense to fight something that you don't see or don't have. So obviously you have to first, the first step is to see your sinfulness, to see your passions, to see where it comes from. And we all uh, just trust the church when the church says more, all of the sins come from pride of self-love and self-will. And this is where the key is. And this is what we have to get rid of. And uh, to get rid of that, the easiest way is to start to be in obedience to the church, to fulfill the fasting rules as properly as the church is asking us to do and uh, to try to live according to the gospel. 
we do that, then all of a sudden, all the great lift of the burden of having to be judged for every action, every thought that you make, is going to be lifted from us. Because the Lord will take it away, because He came to this earth for that reason. He put our sins on the cross. He, he did it if we believe in Him. And that's where the key is to, we have to believe that the Lord is our Savior. And believing that, you and me can start to become better and better and hopingly that by the time the Lord calls us to go to the kingdom and to another world that he will invite us into the kingdom of heaven because he will say you have worked hard on yourself and through my grace you were able to free yourself from all those things which are an abomination to me and so come to me my son or my daughter and this is what the why the church has made this uh, this whole triology so that the, when time comes for the Pascha we can truly can rejoice because we will be already the new man for the old man and us is going to be destroyed and we will become new man a new person in Christ my beloved, let's work on it. Let's not become lazy. Let's just work on it. And whenever there is any kind of a source of a breaking the door, let's not forget that those things, everything that is leading us the wrong way, away from the Lord, comes from the Satan and his cohorts. And do not listen to them. Let's not listen to any of them. And tell them, be gone, Satan, as the scripture says. You will do that. You will resist the evil one. And he will not going to be able to tempt you into anything to take you away from the Lord. My beloved Let's pray for each other. It's utmost importance to show the love for the Lord. If we have the love for the Lord, we will absolutely will have love for one another. And we will pray for one another. I think you can measure probably the strength of the love that we have is how much we pray one for another. And that goes for a husband and wife that may be saying to each other, I love you and so on, and the children to the parents and so on, relatives and neighbors. If we truly love somebody, then we will truly pray for them, that the Lord will help them to clean, cleanse themselves and then to become purified so that they as silver and gold to be able to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. <laughs>